Senator is the um, Pledge of Allegiance. With that, Dave Peterson, will you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Okay. Next is Chairman's comments. I have no comments tonight. Uh, we are about one minute from. We started a little bit late this this evening, so it's about 7:04. It's 7:05 to 7:15 is citizen query. Any questions at that particular time, you can make them. Okay, and we first we have one appointment tonight, and that is with Kurt Baker, and he's here to discuss the regulatory agreement for the. Uh, Rally Village Green Affordable Housing Units. So, without any further ado, let's get into the meat of the evening, and we will go to general business. And we have first uh, antique uh, dealers dealer license renewals, and we have none tonight. So, we'll move on to next general business number two: a letter of resignation from Nina Dynan from the COA board. Okay, and uh, honorable selectman, this is to hereby uh, notice of my resignation effective immediately as council and aging board member due to health reasons. Sincerely, Nina Guinan. Um, do I have a motion to accept? I give the motion. Second. I have, I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Mr. can we Chairman, do the, yes. letter of uh, Thanks for her work at the Council on Aging, and we'll accept her resignation with regrets. Yes, with regret. Okay. So we sent a little letter up, and we thank you. Thank you for your service. Okay, moving on. General business number three. We have a letter from Howard Vogel, Conservation Commission opening. To the, town of, to the town of Raleigh Selectman, I would like to express my interest in the position of the Town of Raleigh Conservation Committee. My wife and I just became residents of Raleigh in February, moving from Lexington, Mass., uh, where we owned a home for, for 30 years. I have been a member of the Lexington Recreation Committee since 2009, vi Vice uh, Chairman for two years, where I also also, uh, the Recreation Committee represented to Lexington's Greenway Corridor Committee since 2011. I have always had a strong interest in recreation and, and outdoors, taking advantage of the open space both in Lexington and throughout New England. I have been very impressed with the amount of conservation land available here in the North Shore and uh, like, I feel like I would uh, be part of the work that is being done in the town of Raleigh to continue conservation efforts and to ensure that open space continue to flourish in our new town. I have attached my resume, which includes my professional history along with my volunteer activities. I look forward to meeting with you and discuss my potential involvement with the Conservation Commission. Regards, Howard Vogel. Okay, so. Mr. Chairman, I know um, it's been the practice of the selectmen to have uh, individuals meet with that the respective board mm -hmm. that they're interested in, and um, we know that um, the uh, the CONCOM hasn't had a chance to meet Mr. Vogel. They're meeting on the 15th okay. of April. I just point that out to you um, when you want to keep in mind how you want to schedule him to appear before the selectmen to discuss this. Well, you should probably meet. So well, usually do they meet with the with their respective board first, or do they come here? Yeah, often uh, they will meet to make sure that they uh, there are special um, you know requirements of each board. Like the CONCOM meets on um, every third uh, Tuesday, okay. and I believe it's at seven o'clock. And uh, they may have late evening, so they may have mm -hmm. some particular questions. Okay. And um, that they want to address to make sure that. The individual is interested in, you know, still interested mm -hmm. once once they realize what the requirements are. Well, he seems to have an impressive resume. Yes, here. yes. So, meet with him afterwards. Yeah. yeah so I don't. We'd, I'd like to get to just back to him with the date to meet with the selectmen, okay. and I'm, I think it just needs. When's the next time conservation meets? We're meeting on the fifteenth, Tuesday the fifteenth. We meet on the fourteenth, 
then we don't meet until the 28th. Okay. And um, That's we right. have a few things already on the 28th. We could probably get them on at about 8 o'clock, maybe. Okay. 15. Sound good? Okay. okay. All right. Okay, that takes care of general business. Um, go to old business, discuss and review FY15 budgets and town meeting warrant. I, think we can do that in five I minutes. don't think we can do that in five minutes. So why don't we um, take this, we'll put this to the side. And we'll move on to town meeting warrant public hearing. About number four. Go back it. Bob, that's a real good idea. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, that would be really good, except I don't have number four. I have number three. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. I got it. Okay. I got it. Yeah. I got it here. Okay. <coughs> okay. This agreement between the town of Raleigh and contractor. Okay, bid document. And this is for. So, um, Mr. Chairman, last week the selectmen um, reviewed the bid results with yes. um, the Parks and Rec Committee representative, and Chickadee Hill Farm Services was the low. Uh, bitter and therefore um, now you need to vote to sign the contract. Okay. So everything seems to be in order here. I have a motion from the board. I'll, I'll make that motion. I have a second. Second. I have a second. Any discussion from the board? All levels in favor of signing? Aye. 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 Okay. We all have to sign this. <coughs> I think, whoop, got another one I think in here. Yep, we do. We got two signatures to be done. It's 11 minutes after the hour. We have another <clears throat> four minutes left in citizen query. Again, I remind everybody in the room that this meeting is being audio and visually digitally recorded. About 13 minutes after the hour, I'll go to, go to number two, town meeting warrant uh, public hearing, April 28th. Over the past several years, the Board of Selectmen has held an informational meeting hearing on the town meeting warrant pri uh, prior to the town meeting. This gives the town residents an opportunity to ask questions on the warrant articles in less formal uh, setting <coughs> of the town meeting. Suggested hearing date is April 28th. 2014, and which would be at 7:30, and it'd be upstairs. So, again, I think that is a we've done that the last about oh, four or five years now. Yeah, and I think that is a, a good way to get the you know the, the townspeople in here and to ask questions and to you know, feel like we, we are going backwards. Years, right. years ago, 
in the same room upstairs. Mm -hmm. They used to have pre-town meeting. Pre-town meeting. Pre-town meeting. So they would go through the whole warrant ahead of time. And then oh. and the, the regular town meeting later. Okay. But are we, we're scheduling uh, Mr. Vogel? The well, same the night? board just uh, indicated that they wanted to have him on at eight o'clock. So, yep. Okay. We'll have him at eight o'clock. Okay. Seven thirty. Um, yeah. That's a half an hour. I don't know. I mean, well, yeah, we should be able to go through it in a half an hour. I mean, it's not like we're going to yeah, it's not every, every warrant article. Just go through them and mm -hmm. highlight them, and if anybody's got a question, we'll try to answer them. Sure. So, that'll be that. So. Takes care of that, but that's the side. And I think for 30 more seconds, if I can keep this up, we can go right into our first appointment. Kurt, come on down. All right. Sean, come on in. We got a seat reserve for you, too. <laughs> okay. Our first appointment, 715. Town Planner Kirk uh, Baker is here, um, is here to discuss the regulatory agreement for Raleigh Village Green Affordable Housing. Kirk will give an overview of the Raleigh Village Green Project. The Board of Selectmen needs to vote to sign in signature uh, page of regulatory agreement. Town Council has reviewed the regulatory agreement and only had one comment. The signature page uh, only contained one signature line. We'll go on to that. Okay, with that, I missed. Oops. Yeah, I wrote these, uh, these uh, a cover, cover letter, a memo, a formal memo that kind of describes what, what this is about. And then um, the second, second page of the handout, there's a flyer that the lottery agent has submitted that they would actually like to have the town possibly put up in public places and maybe up on our website to mm -hmm. advertise the upcoming lottery that will be taking place and uh, so just basically the uh, the background for this is that the um, uh, Raleigh Village Green was approved in 2010 as 25 unit multifamily uh, residential two to uh, two bedroom two and a half baths mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and uh, it's actually made up of a, like a mix of triplexes duplexes and even a, I guess a couple of quadruplexes but um, overall, there's there's 25 total units um, and 10 within 10 buildings on that, that are proposed to be on that side. Um, I think it's only half built out right now, from what I can tell. Like, you know, right over there, but um, I guess as of last year, as part of the application process, the one of the uh, stipulations was. Um, that two of the units of, would be set aside for affordable housing, mm -hmm. and so that the town, with in tandem with the developer, would apply to DHCD, uh, Department of Housing and Community Development, um, to uh, set aside uh, two units as local action units so they could fulfill the local initiative program. And so that this was done last, uh, I think it was last uh, October, mm -hmm. uh, when the application, when the Board of Selectmen actually uh, approved or endorsed the application that was then sent over to DHCD. And it was reviewed by DHCD, um, and they got back to us in January, which is kind of where I came into the, into the picture. And um, they had actually uh, requested additional information on the application. In regards to a request that had to do with the uh, local selection preference, um, so, uh, basically asked saying at that time that the um, that the statistical data uh, was 2000 census uh, data that it needed to be updated to 2012 data. So I uh, did a, did a narrative to them and, and resubmitted um, with a new statistical analysis. Um, but the uh, that was uh, that was in regards to the local selection preference. So uh, DHCD uh, Janice Lesniak had actually reviewed the application. She said that based on the current economic um, statistics that that come from the Census Bureau, that the town doesn't really qualify for the local selection preference. 
So uh, we didn't get that. Uh, so they wanted to go on and draft up the the regulatory agreement, submit it, and go on and start the lottery to get some people. Because people have actually been calling and expressing interest in the affordable units, and they said that even uh, despite not getting local selection preference, it doesn't it doesn't exclude anybody um, from rally actually from having from being you know taking part in the mm -hmm. lottery the application process and and potentially being. Um, a recipient of one of the affordable units. So I, that's what we have here is the, uh, the regulatory agreement uh, that they have uh, drawn up. It's been reviewed by the town council um, and and uh, Judy had that one uh, comment in regards to the signature page. Um, and uh, I didn't know if, uh, if you wanted me to go over the regulatory agreement or if you might have questions sure. about right. it. Um, I'll try to answer. Yeah, I, if you would go through the, oh, okay. the agreement. Yeah, the um, as far as um, just to kind of break it down, um, it's kind of uh, starts out with um, these. It's like there are thirteen stipulations that make up the agreement uh, that actually define uh, the what the municipality. Does and this is kind of like a boilerplate. Mm -hmm. I've, I've dealt with these before, and this is kind of boilerplate language. And um, but it defines what the municipality, in this case Raleigh, and the obligations of DHCD and the applications of the uh, of the the obligations of the developer. So it outlines those in the first section, um, items one through I believe it's thirteen, um, and then you have a section this, where the signature pages actually occur. Um, and on those pages, you have the attachments, exhibits A, B, and C. Uh, exhibit A being the legal property des description. And the exhibit B providing some explanation of um, these unit sales prices. Uh, involved, and if you turn to Exhibit B, it's about halfway. There's not really page numbers, so it's kind of hard to navigate. But um, Mr. Chairman, you, you're the only one that has it. It's about uh, 30 pages long. Uh, oh, it's a, here it's it is. A pretty standard. I hit it on myself. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's what's called an LIP local initiative uh -huh. plan from the GHCD. We have a similar one with uh, Woodside condos. So what what this will do um, is walk in, there'll be a deed right around the two units, of, um, and I know the board is familiar with that because we've had requests from owners of some condos and other places asking to kind of get uh, extricate themselves out of these units because the market's upside down um, when they had, you know, first been put into affordable uh, unit status. So, but what this will do is allow um, the town to have um, these deeds restrictions for affordable housing. So if the property is changes hands through sale or otherwise, it will stay with the with the unit. So there'll be those stipulation that the unit, if it's sold, will not go back to fair market value. Exactly. It will be restricted. So only another qualified buyer could buy into it after if it changes hands. Have they designated which units are yeah, that, affordable. Uh, <clears throat> that's a, actually on exhibit B, units 24, which is in building 10. Uh, its address is uh, 4 Heritage Drive. So it's actually the actually that first unit on the left, and I think it's going to be the model unit. So when you go out there, mm -hmm. that'll be the one where they hold the, um, they actually have the lottery. Um, and then the next building over unit, or um, uh, building nine has a, a, the there's unit twenty one in that building, which is the other affordable. Uh -huh. Twenty one. So, 21? so yeah. there is units twenty one and twenty four. Okay. And, and one the, is a one person house, household, and the other one is a three person household. Oh no! All, all, all are. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, all are. Uh, oh, you're talking about in terms of the, the build, like the yeah, expert. which. Uh, yeah, on the maps, um, you'd have to, it's easier to see on the mapping, but I think it's the third page. Uh, but yeah, that building, actually, um, the one that unit 
24 is in the model will, is a, is a triplex. So a triplex. Three, yeah, it's a three family, and then unit uh, building nine, where unit 24, uh, that's a quadruplex. Actually, quadruplex. that's the only quadruplex in the whole. The rest are triplexes and duplexes. Okay. And these are townhouse, uh, townhouse condominiums. Right. And so, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to have this conversation with Mr. Baker earlier, just to confirm, this will not become a public road. This is going to be a, a closed community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I would also point out that if you're interested in the deed writer, the stipulations of the deed writer, that's Exhibit C. Um, the only thing I would point out about the deed writer is that these things always point out a um, assign a monitoring agent so that it would be annually inspected. In this case, uh, I know in some cases it's the municipality. In this case, DHCD is actually designated the monitoring agent, mm -hmm. but that the municipality would be, could be also depended on by DHCD. So DHCD actually asks the municipality to do monitoring. So in order, in order to qualify for affordable unit, with the qualifications would be here on this page, on the second page. Yeah. Um, okay. This. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the. Yeah. They do get the qualifications. Include, yeah. Maximum income eighty percent of the area medium income. Yes. Okay. It would be a one-person household forty-seven thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Oh. Two-person household fifty-four thousand two hundred. That's the income we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Exactly. Three-person yeah. household sixty-one thousand, and a four-person household would be sixty-seven thousand. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Household maximum asset limit for this development is seventy-five thousand okay. dollars. Yeah. Okay. Applications are accepted between three three fourteen fourteen and five twenty one fourteen. And the housing water lottery will be held five twenty nine fourteen at six p.m. Um, for Heritage Way, Raleigh. So, yeah. Okay. All right, anything to add to that, Kurt? Uh, no. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Any questions from the board? I don't know. I'll just go one quick one. Sure. Once these units are sold and the affordable units are sold in the future, they sell five years down the road, somebody wants to move out. Who then how do they do the lottery at that point? How, how do they, do you know offhand how they? Well, it's actually, uh, that would be covered in the regulatory agreement. I don't think, so. I think uh, there's a time frame in which they have to do a new lottery. Um, Does the town become the lottery agent at that point, do you know, or is it? No, I, I, I think they would uh, hire, either hire to bring back the, uh, the old lottery agent, okay. or I mean, yeah. All sign right. a new contract for a lottery agent. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. I would actually need to need I probably should read before I'm just saying the general point what I know about it so far. Okay. We need right. DHCD working now with um, owners of condo units uh, in a different location trying to find buyers because um, the uh, fair market value for non affordable is lower than the affordable housing established price because the market went upside down. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, I, you know, they, they do provide a lot of assistance um, to, the, to the people that buy into these and when they're ready to sell because of life changes and situations, they do help promote and market the sale, you know, the sale of them, so for, for, for the pool that, we, that needs to buy into it, so. Anything else, Kurt? No, that's it. Larry? Uh, I just had one question. Can you explain the three to four person household receive preference? Three or four person household? Right. Oh, down the bottom here? Mortgage pre approval, right. other restrictions apply. I think it's because they're two bedroom units. You don't want one person living in a two bedroom house. They would give preference they would give to uh, so as long three as or four person. In other words, they want to have the thing filled with families, not just a single person. Yeah, but I, I've mm -hmm. seen that as being DHCD policy, that they, they right. use a preference for families. But how do you determine that in the lottery? Well, mm -hmm. they would actually be filling out or providing that information about whether it's for a single person or if it's for 
You have to fill out an application right. as part of the I understand of the that, but uh, how does that work? You know, if, if we'll say if a single person wants to apply is, mm -hmm. and everyone else is three to four people, how does that work in, in the lottery? Does well, he have the same chance of winning? Well, well I think that's what it means. I, I think there, there's a wait. And I don't know exactly the formula that they do, but they would obviously have to assign a kind of a weight to to um, a three or four person application. Oh, so, so it's not a like a draw a number lottery. No, it won't be an even chances. Um, I understand. The way I would understand it. I mean, I think it would be like they would, um, as they hold a lottery, but they would assign like a statistical weight to each application so that when when the applicants are chosen, the ones with three or four members in their family would have more of a chance statistically to, okay. to be drawn. Thank you. Yeah. That help, Larry? Yes. Okay. Okay, without any further ado, then, um, I have a motion to sign the regulatory agreement. I'll make that motion. I have a motion to a second. second. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Two places, the three places to sign. I thought they said uh, three copies. Yeah. Do you decide something too on this, Kirk? Or this? I, I didn't see anything for the okay. right. It's all up to Sean now. <laughs> Kirk, I don't think we have anything else, do we? Okay. That's it. Kirk, thank you very much for coming in. All right, thank you. Okay. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Kirk. Good night, Kirk. Thank you again. All right. Moving on back to uh, discuss purchase of Raleigh Girl Scout Camp land. Okay. Bob and Dave, you um, worked a lot with this, so I'm going to refer to you on this. 
you want to go through. Yeah, that? it might be at this point, maybe Debbie could. Mm -hmm. This is stuff that's kind of updated since sure. Bob and I were really involved, but I think maybe Debbie, you could uh, sure. give us the fastest update because you're most familiar with it on the yes. stuff you've written. Uh, yes, I do need some um, direction from the board this evening on a few things. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, um, you know, we're, we're working on uh, filing an application to the state for the self help grant. So there are a number of requirements, as you know, that uh, we need to fulfill in order to get that very uh, complicated application in order. And one of them uh, that David Santamena of Greenbelt pointed out is that the town either needs to have two appraisals or one appraisal and a review. So, of course, we did an appraisal of the property. Mm -hmm. um, David has kindly uh, contacted a firm and to see if they would be available to do a review for the town and they quoted about two thousand dollars and they can get it done in 30 days uh, this is called foster appraisal um, we have as you know we've been uh, spending down the ten thousand dollar appropriation we got at the november town meeting right and have a balance of approximately twenty seven hundred dollars um and i want to know if the board would give me the authorization to go forward to get this review of the appraisal done so that uh, that can be uh, put in as part of the application for the grant that we're trying to apply for to get some funds to offset the purchase cost. Any discussion from the board? I'll give you a motion, Mr. Chairman. I have, a, have I, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All Any discussion? Just All those sure, in favor? make sure that it's a higher the firm of uh, $2,000, yes. the firm of Foster. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, the second one is, um, you know, we, we need to have uh, some publicity, uh, positive publicity, um, on this um, purchase. So Greenbelt has offered to, you know, um, fund uh, the cost to print and mail a postcard to town residents, informing them of the uh, that this article is on the town meeting warrant and the significance of the land. Mm -hmm. um, and they will also put on the card in their offering to hold a weekend walkthrough of the property. They would coordinate it for anybody that was interested in um, coming out on a Saturday and Sunday. Um, the date, the weekend to be decided, you know, would be sometime, obviously, before town meeting. I don't think it's going to be town meeting weekend of uh, May. Um, mm -hmm of May 2nd and uh, May 3rd and 4th. So we would say probably the 26th and 27th of April. And residents that were interested mm -hmm. could could go on a walk through with uh, Greenbelt staff. And they would put out a postcard informing the people that, um, you know, this is a crucial piece of open space that the, you know, that will be up for a vote on the to town meeting warrant. So. Need a uh, vote to approve the green belt? Yes, this, well, the selectmen, if you want to, um, you need to authorize this before they do that. We should vote. Can I have a, a motion? Also move. I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Moving on to survey property. Yes. Um, so I, I was on the phone with David Santamena again from Green Belt, and we were mm -hmm. discussing the survey. Um, so I've, I've gotten in some proposals, and um, obviously I'm not going to have any funding for that until May 6, if the town meeting approves it. In the meantime, though, he, um, he advised me maybe I could at least um, sort of uh, verbally secure, uh, a, you know, an agreement with with one of them, and I, I think Donna Hope Parkhurst would be the one to line them up to so that they're not booking uh, work and, and making plans to uh, survey you. other properties because this is going to be very time consuming. So I, I obviously I don't have an appropriation. I'm not asking to sign a contract or anything with them, but maybe have, you know, if you would authorize me to just, you know, verbally start to secure them um, and kind of lock them in to start immediately after town meeting. Okay. Um, this is nothing we have to go out to bid on. Uh, survey work actually is exempt, okay. but um, <clears throat> civil engineering and survey work. But I do have three prices. Okay. I have a motion. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Second. Do I have a second? I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then uh, we have 
have an update from a conservation agent, Brent Bazak. We told him to take tonight off. He's been here every week. Yes. Um, diligently updating the board. So he, he did uh, meet with Amy today and go over um, a few of the things that have been happening in this area. Um, so he's been able to uh, have uh, obtained some records from the former open space chairman. However, he doesn't have the actual completed surveys. So this is part of what needs to be filed with the state. Um, and the, you know, even though the state will accept a draft open space plan, they do. There are some critical documents that need to be filed. So um, I believe there's still a search going on by this individual and in his, you know, boxes and in his attic or whatever to continue to look for these documents. Um, sections one and two of the open space plan have been reviewed by um, Mr. Bazelak and uh, they've been approved by the CONCOM. So those are done. Section three needs to be updated with the 2010 census data, but it doesn't need to be written, which is good. Um, <clears throat> and the consultant we uh, just hired is working on um, the inventory of land sections. So this is a, a very technical section of grant application. So thankfully we have uh, somebody that's an expert in that field working on that. So we could have essentially a final draft, um, you know, in some form of fashion ready, you know, minus some of the accompanying documents that we need with, from those surveys. And so we seem to be in pretty good shape. We also have Mer uh, Merrimack Valley Planning Commission as the select one approve that. They're uh, working on the, ma the maps. So uh, we're making some significant progress. Excellent. We'll just keep you updated week by week. Thank you, Deb. You're welcome. Okay, any questions from the board? I just make one comment, sure. Mr. Chairman. Every year, Brent Bay's like goes out to the conservation land across the police station and picks up trash in commemoration of Earth Day. Mm -hmm. I noticed in coming by there today that there's two very large black bags of waiting to be picked up, I assume, by the highway department. So I'm assuming that Brent went out there over the weekend and uh, he did. did the trash pickup, and I would like to, if we could, send him a note of thanks and send it to the board, or to the Conservation Commission board so that mm -hmm. he gets some public recognition. He's done this every year for I don't know how many years, but he just goes out on his own and just does it. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. I'll pick them up. Uh, Okay. He usually okay. calls me. I've done right, it every yeah. year for him. Oh, thank you, Jack. Yeah. There's yeah. two right by the sign. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know. But I wanted to wait. I figured there might have been something yeah. coming okay. up tonight. I'll get them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just saw an email that came in today. He and his wife did. Um, they yeah, they do it every, started yeah. early to avoid ticks and, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to get out there and start cleaning. So I think he's got some more cleaning. If his wife is with him, maybe mention his. Thank I will. Thank them both. Yeah. Yeah. Family and, uh, endeavor there. There's a couple of towns around here, a couple of people, um, over in Ipswich. They they have um, same thing along 133 though. That you'll see them out there. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Rotary yeah. members do that. Yeah, but he's so. done a yeah, real great Brent job. Does this every, and yeah. Brent does a great yeah. job, and yeah. I really appreciate. We really yeah. appreciate with everything else work. he's doing, he managed to squeeze this in on the. Yes. Off. Well, he's passionate about you yeah, know, his is. job, and it, it really shows mm -hmm. through. I mean, yep. he never turns away uh, a project or, or anything. He will drop everything and, and do what he has to do. So we're really appreciative. Great service to the town. Um, let me see, where are we? Discuss and review FY15 budgets. The Board of Selectmen needs to review the draft uh, special town meeting warrant. So, um, the warrant will be reviewed by a uh, finance committee tomorrow evening. The town council is finishing up uh, her review of the warrant tonight. We have a balanced budget and we will uh, have a final proofreading of the annual special town meeting warrant on Tuesday, of the annual and the special town meeting warrant on Tuesday and Wednesday. Board of Selectmen needs to hold a special meeting on the morning of Thursday, April 10th, to sign the warrants. We need to get them uh, to uh, get them to the copy center this week. So, gentlemen, you all available this Thursday morning? I am. At 10 o'clock? Yes. Should be. 10 or 10:30, Mr. Chairman. Um, is 10 better or is 10:30? 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30. 10:30.
10, oh, 10 o'clock? Yeah. 10 o'clock. Okay. So 10 a.m. it is this Thursday. Okay. So. Go through this each one or? Yes, yeah, so Mr. Chairman, if the board um, you know, wants to, to review this um, in a special town meeting where it, um, in the same manner you reviewed the annual last week. Uh, if this is any questions on anything before it goes to the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. Article 4 is the, um, the transfer and appropriation to cover the cost of town meeting. Mm -hmm. That's printing, mailing. Of both the annual and special. So that transfers into the selectmen's line. Uh, we're gonna, we have uh, surplus money in the Essex Regional Retirement uh, Budget because we had a prompt payment plan where we paid early and um, resulted in a discount. So we're gonna be using some monies from that account to cover some of these extraneous expenses. Um, Article 5 uh, transfers the money from our FY. Uh, 14 operating budget uh, collective bargaining reserve and in, into an article so uh, that this money will be available in future fiscal years if we settle the, uh, the current contract with the police union. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, article 6 is a treasurer collector article. Uh, she's got some funds in a wage line that she would like to transfer to um, an existing um, off budget article to continue with her um, microfilming of permanent records. And article 7, um, uh, as the Board of Selectmen agreed with the appointment of the successor CPA administrator, um, that she uh, receive a stipend commensurate with her, her predecessor on a prorated basis. So uh, this would cover that stipend. And then going forward in the fiscal 15 budget, that's a $2,000 annual stipend paid out on a quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, Article 8 is a water department um, transfer uh, to cover um, some borrowing, unanticipated borrowing costs. As we go through this, if board members have um, questions, please. Bring, I actually bring forward. reviewed it this weekend, Mr. Chairman, and uh, made some comments to the administrator this morning. Okay. Thank you, Bob. So, um, Article 19, um, the, uh, the capital planning team, um, as you know, of Mr. Mary and Mr. Peterson have put together um, the, the article uh, that we see here under Article 9 for the uh, $171,200 borrowing for um, capital items under number one relating to <coughs> computer purchase, computer mm -hmm. software, other technological upgrades for the accounting treasurer, collector, conservation commission, board of selectmen, police department, fire department, and library, 42200 and then $71,000 for upgrades uh, to uh, various town facilities. Um, we have our replating rotted areas of the town wharf, painting the exterior of the Raleigh Public Library, purchasing and installing a new handicap door and uh, constructing and installing an awning at the handicap entrance at a town hall, replacing the handicap door at the annex, purchasing and installing new flooring and ceiling at the town hall, and upgrading the cemetery department building. And then the final is um, automotive, relating to 58000 for the purchase of an automobile for the Council on Aging and a tractor for the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So that is a borrowing article. It's been reviewed by the Bond Council and the town council and covers a uh, year one of the town's um, five-year capital plan. Uh, Article 10 um, is a housekeeping measure at the fall town meeting. We uh, had an article to um, authorize the uh, trading in of the uh, existing um, min bus or what the the um, the accessory. Um, van or bus that mm -hmm. the Council on Aging has that they don't really use for a variety of reasons because it's not uh, handicap accessible. So um, because now we've changed the direction of where they're going, they, they wanted to trade it in and get a minivan. Now they don't want a minivan. They want a different type of automobile. Uh, what we'll do is we'll sell that um, and put the proceeds into the general fund. 
Let's say Article uh, 11 is um, related to um, transferring a prior CPA appropriation of 60000 going back to um, May of 2005. Uh, and we initially thought back in, at that time that we would be able to do a full restoration of various floors at the town hall. Mm -hmm. And um, we have since discovered that that is not proven to do for a variety of reasons. This is an old building. There are certain substances in the un underlays of the floor that uh, we really do not want to expose mm -hmm. um, out. And, and, and needless to say, the cost wouldn't be enough. And it would be, um, you know, we'd, we'd have to really close the building down. It just wouldn't work financially. So we, we're going to be um, putting this money from the CPC to a current CPA project, which is the restoration of the windows at Town Hall. So we'll take the 60000 that we had here, Mike, and on Article 9, um, we've, we're handling the flooring in a different way okay. by overlaying the floor, mm -hmm. you know, with tasteful uh, flooring material that's appropriate for this building. So this is a transfer to the window project that we were unable to finish because we didn't have enough money. So we'll finish the second floor and then get as many uh, windows as we can on the first floor done. We, most of the windows will be addressed will be on the south and north side of the building. On the, we didn't finish. On the second floor. On, on the, the second, second floor, yeah. And right. uh, there's yeah. a number of windows that need to be replaced. East and west side of the building has been done was on the second yeah. floor. I think on there's only floor. six that we need to deal with six. upstairs. Okay. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll be starting to replace windows on the first floor with, as much as we can with this article. Yeah. And actually, the, uh, the first floor windows should be cheaper than the previous 10 that we did because it's a different configuration. So hopefully we can get them done. Okay, okay and then um, Article um, 12, um, we, um, on this project, um, we, you know, realized um, that uh, after they started, there are certain areas uh, of significant rot in some of the structural beams at the annex. This is related to the annex exterior. Um, that aren't related to the project at hand. So uh, we need $12,000 um, to cover these unforeseen costs to the annex project. Bob, you brought that up last week. Yes, it's basically the, the sills that have, have, have some issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have uncovered uh, additional sills since last week. And uh, they didn't look as bad as the first one that we found. Oh, so I think we're, uh, hopefully, this will cover it and we should be good. Mm -hmm. So. It uh, it's, looks promising, at least. This is you, know, you do you do this work around your house or anything else? All of a sudden, you pull off the sheathing. Yeah. And it's a surprise. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 The building is really looking nice over there. It is so looking far. really good. Different. It's a stately building to begin with, and yes. now that it's getting squared away and yeah. the fire escapes are off it and stuff, mm -hmm. it's a real asset to, to the town. Yeah, it's it's really looking, looking good. good. Okay, uh, the next one is um, the CPA uh, has um, uh, approved a, a second grant to uh, Ms. Cheryl Forster for the preserva preservation, restoration, and repair of the Jewel Mill mm -hmm. Fitz Water Wheel located in the Glen Mills Historic District. So this is um, a granting of um, CPA funds to a, a, private, um, to a private project on private property. And um, at this point, uh, this is the second of um, two grantings of um, CPA funds. The, uh, this Mass Historical Commission is still reviewing historic preservation restriction related to this project. However, that won't stop, um, you know, that, that shouldn't impede the process with the article. We should have something in at some point. No funds can be released until the historic preservation restriction is fully executed by mm -hmm. the selectmen. The historical commission will be the town board responsible for, uh, you know, uh, overseeing and administering the requirements mm -hmm. of the historic preservation restriction. So that's the entity that um, that will be closely monitoring that and, and making sure the requirements are met. Are met. Is that part of the article, or, or is they there is signatory on it? Um, the article. Grants the funds, um, and 
in order to uh, have those funds granted, a preservation restriction has to be in place. Has to be. That meets the requirements and approval of the Mass Historical Commission. So if they don't have the approval of the Mass Historical before the town meeting? Oh, well, it, this shouldn't stop it. Um, the, if, it this still approved, be voted. if this is approved, if this is approved at town meeting and we don't have it back in time, it, you know, it's just a matter of housekeeping of when that's going to be sent forward for review. No funds will be released because it's contingent upon it's that contingent. preservation right. restriction being reported at the Registry of Deeds. And, and the worst case scenario would be that Mass Historic does not approve mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the restriction. If, at that point, the funds would then revert back to CPC to be reallocated. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't see anything coming along that Mass Historic, at least we couldn't work with them as far as straightening out any language they might have problems with. But if, like I said, the worst case scenario was that they don't accept it at all, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't lose the money. Uh, it would go back Certainly. to the CPC fund. Yeah, and, and all indications is actually that they've uh, told the town council that things look fine. I just think actually they have a backlog. Yeah, which is typical. And, you know, I, my experience is, you know, they're just understaffed and very busy. Yep. And when that's ready, that agreement will probably, um, I, I had a conversation with Sarah Bork, we'd probably have a joint meeting with the Historical Commission to make it easier so that it can be signed and notarized by mm -hmm. both boards at the same time. Yep. Article 14. This is the Girl Scout. The Girl Scout. Camp uh, CPA appropriation combination of borrowing and uh, borrowing uh, through the CPA and appropriating under the CPA 1.7 million um, would be appropriated from the CPA fund, and then the 800,000 uh, would be borrowed. So this has been reviewed by uh, the bond council, the town council. CPA supports it. Or as Lockman supports it. Um, don't know if there's any questions on that. I think we've any comments from the board? Seen that before. Dave? Oh, this is no. the one we talked about earlier that the Green Belt's going to send out the information to the people and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. it's looking good. Yes, it is. Yeah, the CPC does yeah. support it. Yeah, and in this article also authorizes. Uh, the town to file the application um, for the self-help grant that we talked that about grant. earlier mm -hmm. or any other a uh, application for funds in any way connected with the scope and the acquisition. Um, it also will cover the authorization of the Board of Selectmen and to enter into a lease for a portion of the property for recreational purposes. It conveys all part of the land to the care, custody, and control of the Conservation Commission and to a Board of Selectmen and convey easements and conservation restrictions. So uh, similar to the Bradstreet property, uh, open space where we um, we have a, a, a conservation restriction that we have to put on that property. Actually, we have to get that done uh, soon, and um, Brent is working on that with the Autobahn because we need to put that on mm -hmm. the checklist for the self-help grant. Uh, similar, um, in this one, we would probably have the green belt hold the conservation restriction on the open space uh, section of the property. So that would be authorized under this article. So there would be no need to come back the town meeting, it would be, it's comprehensive. Good. Article 15. And this is the, uh, the $40,000 uh, that would be appropriated to cover various costs associated with purchasing mm -hmm. the property. Um, and I know it sounds like a lot, but if the survey is going to be about 20000 20, or so. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, we have to work on a purchase and sale agreement. We have to have legal review of um, various things, uh, title insurance. Um, so there are a number of legal costs. And uh, also, uh, this covers some green, uh, grant writing assistance. So um, as with the open space plan, it, it would really um, be beneficial to have somebody come in and help with the self-help grant. Because between Brent and me, um, you know, we've been some assistance from Greenbelt. You know, we're not going to be able to get this thing filed. Somebody with technical experience to help us. Yeah. 16. Uh, this is the Selectman's article to uh, 
secure funds um, to, to uh, conduct a feasibility study uh, of a new uh, fire station and police station. So we're going to take the money uh, from the sale of real estate account. This is an off-budget account that was um, sort of the repository for the proceeds of the former library building. So we have that money in a fund uh, under the custody of the treasurer, and we'd be appropriating $100,000 from this fund to be used by the selectmen so that we could uh, issue an RFP and uh, get that project going. So we would have a full um, request for proposals. We'd hire a firm. The firm will come back with, um, depending on what the selectmen want to put in there for the scope of services, various options. Two, mm -hmm. two freestanding buildings, a connected building, maybe um, two freestanding with a connection, uh, you know, in between. Um, so different scenarios and costs associated with those construction costs and have them report back at a certain date that you will want to see the, the results of that study so you can do future planning. Um, the next one is um, we're transferring money once again out of the retirement account because we found that we had some surplus funds in that line um, to pay for um, a fiscal 2003 expense uh, that was not covered under a uh, E911 grant for dispatching. The police chief has been participating in the state's uh, E911 grant program and um, when they filed for a reimbursement, it was uh, after the end of the fiscal year and the state rejected a um, request for reimbursement on a various expense totaling $634.80. So we do have to pay that expense and uh, will require a nine-tenths vote. It was just a timing issue. <coughs> Is that 2003 or 13? I'm sorry, 2013. Oh. I said 2003, I apologize. The next one is uh, Gerzak Lane. And I will be giving an update on what's going on with that uh, later on in tonight's agenda. Okay. But that's the warrant article that we've put together. Um, and so we have that on target to get that approved at town meeting. Okay. Want to go to 19? 19. Um, no, we could have had Kirk Baker here to talk about this, but this oh. is the um, okay. Zoning protected This bylaws. is um, the amendment to the town of Rowley's um, zoning bylaws. Last year we passed the temporary mm -hmm. moratorium on registered marijuana dispensaries. So we had one. We have one year um, that was only for one year. So we had to pass this permanent bylaw. So what the planning board uh, did is they have now um, established the appropriate district for these kinds of dispensaries. So if, if, if somebody does come into town looking to do um, start one of these businesses, um, they would have to follow the zoning bylaw, mm -hmm. which um, they put a lot of thought into developing uh, these uh, permitting and uh, certain areas are in the town are designated for this. And they've had a public hearing on it, so they've done their due diligence, met all the requirements on that. Um, it does require a special permit. And in addition, the article also covers uh, what I think was uh, a deficiency in the zoning bylaws. Uh, we didn't have uh, specifically um, a section that would allow fitness centers and indoor recreational facilities in the retail district and the business light industry district. So under this um, zoning bylaw amendment, they've cured that. Um, so they, they do want to be able to broaden mm -hmm. uh, the uses in both of those districts to allow for these kind of facilities. So they're covering that all in one zoning article. And then Article 20, uh, I know you're familiar with, because Brent's been before the board discussing the um, new FEMA maps. Yes. So um, this addresses uh, the requirements and the revisions in the FEMA floodplain maps. Okay. So once again, the planning board had a public hearing on that. That's it. Okay. Debbie, thank you very much for taking us through that. Okay.
start with the budget. So uh, we've completed the budget process, Mr. Chairman. The um, FinCom has reviewed all the budgets. The selectmen have reviewed all the budgets. Um, this is still a working draft. Um, um, still completing the uh, last column there, uh, mm -hmm. which matches identically the uh, requested fiscal 2015 column that's been approved by the selectmen. So um, I just wanted the board to see that, that, that um, we have a $14,772,922 a operating budget. Fourteen million seven hundred and seventy two thousand nine hundred twenty two dollars. Okay. So we'll be um, putting this into the annual town meeting warrant um, tomorrow and uh, hopefully and finalizing everything Wednesday, but there shouldn't be any changes unless there was a typo. Okay. But we've, we've been checking it, so any comments from the board members? Yes. Uh, yes. We received an email about that uh, school that somebody had a question about whether Raleigh, since Raleigh residents were not eligible to go to a certain school. Charter school? Yeah. And, yes, that was and referred to. In lines 90 through, through 97, we're not paying for any uh, fees no. for, for that school, so that would. That's not, that's I actually paid out of the covered. school budget. Yeah. So we, since the selectmen have no. Um, authority to um, make any changes to the Triton line item budget only the school committee can I'm not sure where um, how how that's how Raleigh is adjusted for the River Valley Charter School R River so Valley Charter School. That's, that question has been sent to uh, the school committee mm -hmm. and superintendent farmer and um, I've asked that the selectmen be copied on the response to um, the resident posing that question but um, that has no effect on any of these lines. I believe state law dictates how that's filled out anyway. It's a formula. With the yeah, charter it's a formula school. within the with the charter school law. So it's really nothing that the school committee or we have any control over. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I would just uh, comment, uh, thank Debbie and Amy and the staff for mm -hmm. the unbelievable amount of work putting the articles and the budgets and everything else together with the Girl Scout camp and the water department issues. I mean, it's just been an unbelievable year for work and effort. And I just would like to commend all of the Peace. Doreen also, uh, the, the amount of work that they put in, and it's a great job. Thank you. This, this, office, this office is humming from late January right through until town meeting, and you really do. You do a splendid job of they putting this all together. Th they came through again. Uh, again. Again, yeah. again. Yeah. Well, thank you, and we, want, we would like to thank the selectmen for all their help, and the fiscal team members who have been uh, setting aside time in their busy schedules to to work on this. So it's really a team effort, and when you work as a team, you, you can get a lot of things done. So it, it's it's a great working atmosphere here at Town Hall. <coughs> we uh, we act, enjoy working with each other, and we have a lot of people that work here that have you know, exceptional talents, so. I We're think I lucky. said it once before. Our employees and volunteers are our most important asset. Absolutely. And just to add to that, that you know, I'll, especially people at, we'll talk, let's want to talk to the people at, at home tonight, sitting there. This table, there's a lot of activity during the day at this table, especially during budget season. There's a lot of things you don't see. And I guess it's kind of like the, the process kind of like watching sausage made. You don't want to see it. There's a lot of stuff done right here at this table. A lot of hard work. And again, I, I just, you know, for all of the, the fiscal team um, putting their heads together and getting this budget together, um, again, you, a lot of things you don't see at home. And there's a lot of work at this table. During the daytime, so and we all hope, of you take we hope that the Thank you. Residents will back us up by coming to town meeting. Yes, give us a quorum so we can work through and get everything done in one night would be would be great. But bring your questions and concerns and to the meeting we're having pre town meeting as well as town meeting. But and support everybody by coming and voting and taking part in in the budget process. And this is really all about you out there. So hope to see you at town meeting. 
Exactly. Okay. Anything else? Next is. So we have the annual. I know the that annual town meeting. I reviewed this last week. I just thought we should have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. I know the fire chief is here this evening uh, to talk about the ladder truck article, um, which is. Sorry. Should have this memorized. Oh, we have added 22, the 22. article 22. And just before you get to that, just so you know, we've added the water department um, budget that is actually now in the warrant. Okay. And um, the finance committee met on Tuesday night. Mr. Mary and Mr. Peterson were there. They uh, took the same position as the um, board of selectmen did, and we have a recommendation from the floor, from the floor. because the revenue re report isn't available yet. I believe they are working hard at it and um, have their consultant preparing something that may be discussed at the water board meeting tomorrow. If there is, um, if you go to page three, um, this is the water department revenue statement. Mm -hmm. uh, the fiscal team uh, kind of agreed we should run this even though we don't have the projected 2015 data, but at least the townspeople are able to see what was actual for 13, what was budgeted for 14. And if we do get data Wednesday morning after they meet Tuesday uh, that they've approved, we can print it. We'll have time to print it. This isn't an article, it's just a, a uh, revenue statement. So that would be the amount they expect to derive from rates, um, the, what they charge for various service work, liens, fees, interests. Okay. These are their, their revenue accounts, earnings on investment, miscellaneous, hydro rentals. Um, so if we do get that, I'll add that in. And you'll see that when you meet on Thursday morning. Okay. So you'll see that we've inserted the finance committee votes on articles that they have recommended in this version. It's still draft. Um, so they have recommended everything uh, that's a money article, uh, except there was one that there was some questions on the, um, the uh, Article 26. Article 26. Which is the adoption from Chapter 59, Section 5N Valor Act. Uh, they were looking for some more specific information regarding this program, which is similar to the Senior Tax Credit Program. Um, we did. Um, get that information from the assessor. We sent it out last week. Uh, if they feel comfortable enough, um, you know, taking a vote on that, I can change that. They're meeting tomorrow night if they'd like okay. to, to make a recommendation or not, or if they just want to wait. Okay, so other than that, then the chief is here to talk about the ladder. Chief, come on up. Up the front row. Get a seat here for you all the time. You know. Okay, Article 22. Chief, this is the appropriate $735,000 for a ladder truck. So, with that. Um, well, I guess I'll go back to where, why we're at where we're at. Um, last summer, during maintenance, uh, mm -hmm. it was determined that one of the ladder flies on the main ladder of the truck had a bent rung. And during the course of finding how much it would cost to fix it, uh, it was deemed to be cost prohibitive for the age of the truck and all the other mechanical issues that we have with it. Uh, I came to the board probably in the beginning of July, sometime around there, um, giving four options of what we could do. And it was deemed at the time to be the best interest to, is to try to pursue a new truck after we found out that after many years of saying that they didn't make anything to fit the building, well, starting last year, one manufacturer did start making a truck that fits tight uh, buildings similar to ours. Uh, we had the demonstrator in the building. It did fit, um, other than knocking out a um, partition wall behind, uh, we, we could make it fit in the building. Um, We looked at other manufacturers. Everybody was either too long. Uh, this one, um, we had several of them in town. Uh, we drove them all over the place. This one seemed to, to fit the community as mm -hmm. well as the station. It, it's a compact truck versus all the other ones. 
Uh, it's a 100 foot ladder similar to the one that we have now. Um, if it succeeds in, in getting the funding for this, we would never have to worry about buying another used ladder truck for 20 plus years. And the, the used ladder truck has been really a problem since... It, it has it. since the day it came. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got most of the bugs out in the first year, but it's still... Uh, we are the third owner of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't what I wanted to do in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I really didn't want to do that, but we were kind of in a jam, and it was well, the only thing available at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if this truck that we're looking at now was around back then, we, we, we wouldn't right. have been doing what we did. This, now, this historical nature of this ladder, it, it was uh, in New York. Yes, Ladder it truck. started off in New York City back in the eighties. In the eighties, wasn't it? Wasn't it at at the towers? Was called the towers or some thought? That was one of the things that the uh, the, the company that we bought it from said that in ninety three it was involved in some in the, aspect of the bombing. The bombing of the, uh, of the tower. The tower. Uh, it was well gone from mm -hmm. uh, New York by the time nine eleven came around. Okay. Um, it, it ended up in in Long Island. Mm -hmm. and before we got it. So we're the third owners of it, and it, 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 it is tired. It's, it's tired and it served its purpose. It served, yeah, it served us uh, when we first bought it. I, I told the selectmen at the time, mm -hmm. seven to ten years, banking on seven and hoping for ten. Well, we got seven years out of it. Uh, it the seven years flew by, um, but it, it's just not worth fixing. No. It really isn't, um, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, uh, people see it for what it is, uh, that there is a need for it. Um, the first ladder truck came into to Rowley uh, mm -hmm. uh, back in 1949. Mm -hmm. It was a city service ladder. Uh, someone's going to correct me on all the thing I'm going to say here if I say it wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it was bought from the town of Ipswich. Mm -hmm. It was 1939 Sanford City Service Ladder Truck. Okay. In 1973, a 65-foot 1949 Seagrave aerial was bought to replace the Sanford. Uh, in 1980, I got it here. I thought I was doing good, but I knew I was going to miss one of these dates. Well, every anytime I mention anything historical, I always get a little nervous. With Bob's <laughs> 19, yeah, yes, 1984. There was a 1955 American La France uh, purchased, and in 1991 there was a 1967 <coughs> American La France ladder that was purchased, which the current ladder we have now replaced in uh, 2006. I, I think the important thing for the people at home tonight to, to understand that this year we pay off. Engine, Engine one. one, correct. Okay, that debt, that debt exclusion override that we took out two thousand eight. Two thousand nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah, eight. We took out in two thousand eight. Will be paid up this correct. year. Okay, the, so we've been planning as as we have with the fire fire department to replace items. Okay, engines, and we've been we've been pretty good. What we've done, we started with three, right. went to engine one, engine three first back two thousand two. Two thousand two, yes. Two thousand two. Now we we're paying off uh, engine, one. engine one. Okay, we've done a, I think a really good job, and now we require a ladder. Right. And and, and with this, this will uh, with this debt exclusion. Uh, we're going from something. What was it? Four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I think. It was four thirty-four, I think. Four thirty-four. Okay. What we asked for, yeah. uh, and uh, there was, um, and then th it would take that and plus to get to the seven thirty-five. I don't know what the exact numbers so are. So right I'm, I'm, I asked for some figures, and it looks like on a medium house, would be about seventy-three dollars a year. But of course, this is a debt exclusion override. So once we pay it off, that's it. We, you know, we'll take it for five years. So this is, I think, is, you know, well worth it. And this is, you know, uh, the way to go. We've done this in the past. Continue on. Do you have any comments from the board? 
No, other than we need to stress that it, after the end of the five years, it will come back off of the tax yes. rate. So it won't be on the tax rate after that. Well, um, you know, well, these are things that you know you, you need to do. I mean, right. you, you do these things in your house. You have to do this with the town. The, ho the town is no different. So any. I fully agree that uh, we have a critical issue and, and we uh, have a, an opportunity to uh, replace the uh, in ladder truck and that we should uh, go make this purchase. And again, it's, you know, we're talking $73 for the whole year per medium family house. So. Anything else to add to this, Chief? Uh, there is a need for it. It's mm -hmm. something you don't see it out a lot, but... Um, well, the last fire that we had, it was one of the uh, pr uh, major pieces of equipment that was being used to fight that fire. Mm -hmm. uh, and from what I've been told, they've done a good job. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't here, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, they kept it to the house. So it, it could have been a lot worse. And just um, you know, I've been out with you guys on the truck and, and ridden, and it's so critical to have a ladder at a fire mm -hmm. because you need to get water up over. Right, and on top of the roof. So helps to get the reach to, to the, the houses reach. that are off the road, yep. somewhat. And uh, th there is a big need for it, as well as all the other equipment that will yep. be carried on it, not just the big ladder. In in a small town, uh, a lot of times the question will come up: Why do you need a hundred foot ladder? And it, and again, it's the reach, it's and, the reach. To, and to get the water on top of correct the the dwelling. Plus, it just allows us to reach, you know, higher floors uh, and, and get people out the windows if that has to happen. Hopefully, we'll never have that happen, but we will have the ability to. Okay. Anything else, Chief? Uh, that's all I have okay. to say. Okay. Anything from the board? No, I think uh, Okay. Chief, thank you so much for coming in tonight thank you. to sure. discuss this. Have a good night. Right, Thanks, Chief. Chief. Thank you. To get another hand. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. All right, Chief. Uh, you'll be available. Um I guess tonight when we we have the information. Uh, I will be here. Actually. I got. I'm working on a PowerPoint presentation okay. to go over it, and I hope to have the numbers for the tax rate for it. Okay. As soon as. All right. As soon as we can. All right. Thank you, Chief. Can we have the numbers for the tax rate? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll call you tomorrow. Thursday. Okay. Tuesday, right? <laughs> Probably sometime this week. Okay. I'll leave that open, Chief. Okay, thank you. We have to be in open meeting here. Okay. Anything else, Deb, on the uh no, uh so if, if you catch any um any anything in there, a typo or whatever, you know, and what hesitate to let me know. Okay. And I'll be working with um uh, Tom moderator and, and reviewing everything with her um, on this as well. This is this is a n nighttime reading tonight and next night. I did night over the weekend, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, if we catch anything, but we'll have it ready Thursday morning. Okay. Excellent. All right. We'll take care of that. All right. That takes care of all business. Moving on to um, new business, uh, town administrator update. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a few items I just want to uh, sure. update the board on quickly. <clears throat> I, I held a procurement meeting with you, uh, Amy, and representatives of the police, fire, highway, and water departments uh, last week uh, mm -hmm. to go over the bidding of automotive mechanic work and gasoline. Uh, we're going to have a town bid for these uh, goods and services. Uh, once the bid documents are uh, in a good form, a draft form, uh, they'll be submitted to the selectmen for review before they're issued on uh, a public solicitation on that. Uh, the second point, um, I got an update from Meridian on the base, uh, Brad Street baseball field project. As you know, that's been going on. We were mm -hmm. a little slowed down by uh, the snow out in the field, but uh, they are working on it. So we have uh, the geotechnical work was done uh, a couple weeks ago. They're finalizing their report. Once uh, we get that report, uh, the engineers at Meridian will work on the uh, stormwater management system design. Uh, so the team, project team um, for this will get together with Meridian, will review the draft designs before there's a formal filing with the Conservation Commission for the stormwater permit. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So that's moving along. Uh, the Annex Exterior project is continuing on schedule. Uh, the other point is um, I've been working with uh, Town Planner Kirk Baker on the Grzeg Lane Street Exception. Oh, yes. As you know, this is an unusual case where the developer has not cooperated in this, um, towards the end of this project. The town meeting um, took the bond money in the fall. Um, we will get that work done under the, t the town, we'll get that work done. But um, while that's going to be, you know, underway, we still have to legally accept the road. So I know that this has been a priority for the planning board and the selectmen to have this road uh, accepted by the town so that the townspeople that live there will have a, have the um, benefit of having a public road. So Larry Graham uh, has been working on the layout plan. He hopes to have it sometime early next week. Once we get that plan, we need to file it with the town clerk because the warrant article references a, a plan that's on file in the town clerk's office. Mm -hmm. So. Um, once the warrant is publicly posted by the constable, that plan needs to be on file. So even though the Sutherland is signing the warrant on, on Thursday and sending it to the copy center, it will be posted sometime next week. Um, we then have to dis, uh, disseminate the public hearing notices to the abutters on the road. So we're thinking of, uh, we should have everything ready for uh, April 16th once that plan is filed because any resident needs to be able to have uh, an ability to review that. I'm recommending that the street layout hearing be scheduled for Monday, April 28th at 7.15 p.m. So uh, that's why we would uh, have a busy agenda that evening, but that's the only other time you know, okay. that I can do that before town meeting. Okay. That has to be done before town meeting, and then town meeting will vote to accept it on the 5th. And then from there, we'll work on getting the deed signed by the developer. He reserved his rights in the road, so. Uh, we do have a provision to take it by eminent domain if we have to. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and the last thing I was informed today um, by um, a vendor to the town uh, that the acting water superintendent is conducting a solicitation for contract water operators. Uh, I was unaware that the water department was issuing a request for price quote for these services. This is for, as I understand, the secondary water operators. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, to my knowledge from last week's meeting, I, this was not discussed during the joint meeting last week. I don't know if any of the select can recall that Amy and I conferred about this and we agreed that this wasn't discussed. So um, I, I am concerned about it and I'm recommending that the Water Board and Board of Selectmen examine this matter, especially because the job functions of water operators are considered collective yes. bargaining work. And uh, normally if we were to um, outsource some of this work, we would have a conversation with the union representative, the business agent, and uh, uh, no one's approached me about that. So I'm, I was I'm a little surprised. I'm very concerned, a little taken back by this. Uh, so I, I think that if they are looking at <clears throat> this, um, that the selectmen and the the water board uh, really uh, think about this, and maybe we do a full review of the operation of the department, including uh, you know really a cost benefit analysis, and and I could involve some of the fiscal team members in that. I'm not sure what's going on. I was uh, a little surprised that this was happening, and there was a fairly quick turnaround. Apparently, it was just issued this this mor late this morning, uh, with a return time of noon time tomorrow. I never seen anything like that. Was it was this a uh, vote of the water board? That no. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, it's unclear to me that this, this was. This is something discussed. I would think the water board would have to vote on before they go out soliciting. Well, beyond that, they would they should have a conversation with the selectmen right, or me right, because we would need to to is discern this for exactly a part time what, operator. No, that there was a discussion about a part time uh, water operator in their fiscal fifteen budget. This is a solicitation uh, of a request for price quote for uh, water operators to work from a company. Contract services. Contract services. And I, I, um, on a, um, a limited basis of three to four months to work in the water treatment plant. And this is a, um, a collective bargaining work. And it was not voted by the water board? I, no, I don't know. That we know of. It wasn't discussed last week. 
Have you informed the... Uh, I talked to one board member. One yeah. board member, I, a guy tried to get in touch with another one, but couldn't recall this at all. This is the superintendent doing this on his own? Or? I don't know. It, well, the water board, I would say, would be the first one, the chairman, to ask. <laughs> well, this is one more, one more complication that we've run into as this thing winds down that nobody's been advised of and that they kind of said in the beginning that they were going to be able to do it with the current personnel. So it, it just adds another confusing element to the whole opening of this water treatment plant that there seems to be no plan in place. It's just helped to skelter whatever the the, the board is meeting tomorrow this night, week correct? Is what they want to do. So uh, I, I saw it on the calendar uh, in the hallway yes. here. I didn't read the posting or the agenda. It is marked in uh, the town clerk's um, calendar. Can we send a, a letter up to the, the board, the, the water board for tomorrow night, and ask them ask them about this, make inquiries of how this came to be. Okay, is there any concerns in your letter that you would like addressed with um, the water board? First of all, can I have a motion from the board to send a letter? I'll make that motion. I have a second? I'll second that. A second. Um, now, gentlemen, any concerns to go along with this? Was well, there is this a situation we could have uh, someone here deliver the letter? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, instead of merely sending it up there that someone could, and I, I'm not available myself, but I think it's a situation that needs to have a, a person. Mm-hmm go to the water board, at least even if they get the letter ahead of time to present the letter. I'll take it up. And That's fine. Know, really emphasize the fact that this is one more uh, check in the, in the box of what's going on here. I'll take it up. Yeah, no uh, we're, we're concerned that we want to know if, if the uh, acting water superintendent was authorized by the board to do this, and if he wasn't, then why is he doing this in and that he should be informed that he is to work th through the uh, board of selectmen and the town administrator at least in doing something like this and i would like i would like to mr chairman ask ask maybe the town administrator to start putting together a proposal for us to take a look at outsourcing or the right, whole well, operation or right, parts let's, of the operation. Let's do that as a second vote, okay? Okay. But let's get any other points to put in the letter. Any other points? Well, I mean, the time frame is very disturbing. Hmm. I mean, we put out a request for those things this morning, and it's got to be back by tomorrow noon at noontime? My understanding. Are we going to get a fair evaluation? Well, I have very con I have concerns with the procurement hat on, I have concerns with, um, you know, uh, personnel, um, job duties that um, mm -hmm. fall in, in an area that I believe are, are under uh, collective bargaining. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say. It, it was sprung on me. All right, let's put these. And who's number. making the evaluation of uh, the proposals? You know, the problem is we, I brought this up last week. Um, Without the operation and maintenance manual that it would have the staffing plan in it, what needed to be done, we're walking around with a blindfold on. And we've had to do that in the budget process. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I am just am very dismayed that the consulting engineers that are working on this wouldn't have provided this six months ago. They knew that that project was supposed to be finished actually in January of 2014. Then they revised that to April of 2014. And I said last week, August, I was corrected by the water department and said, oh no, April. But I, really, it, when the project is finished and in the town's hands, fully staffed, uh, is what I was thinking of. But having said that, I don't understand why this, this manual is just starting to be written now. I think that's How a point. How can we, we plan? I, I can't work in the rest of the town uh, departments this way, so I just. I, I, That's a point that should be in the letter. Does the, okay. does the staffing requirement by the engineers yes. call for something like this? And if not, why are we going out now before we even know? We'd like to see it. For, we, we are paying Weston and Sampson for this staffing plan in the operations and maintenance manual. And um, I don't understand why we don't have that. And it would be good to have it. And if Okay, the points of the letter are... Amy, do you, could you? <laughs> um, ask 
and how this came to be um, authorized. It. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, if the water superintendent was not authorized, why he's doing it? Mm -hmm. um, why didn't you inform? And does it meet the requirements of the engineer's staffing plan? Okay. Or the, the project's staffing plan. So those four, those three or four points yeah, are in can the letter. Please get a copy of that. And could yes. you please explain to us why it's less than 24 hours, or actually 24 well, the and a bidding, half hours? Um, point five. The bidding timetables. Um, are a concern. I, like I mm -hmm. said, I, I wasn't provided a copy of what was going out. I would have objected to it. A day and a half. I mean, it just doesn't call you. You can't get. Well, I would have objected to the whole thing, to tell no, you the truth. I mean, until I it leaves an open door that, in my mind, is not going to meet the requirements of the procurement law. Mm -hmm. You need a fair and open process. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So those points, okay. place in the letter. And I'll bring that up tomorrow. Okay. Um, Dave, your point. Um, you want to make a motion? Do we already make a, do no, we make well, a motion on this? Uh, yeah. Do we have on, a motion? And, 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 made, I, made, made, I have a motion. I have a second, second on the letter. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, motion, Dave, or? Yeah, I, uh, with everything that's going on, and, uh, and, the, and all of a sudden these people are going to run out now and do some contract service on their own, I think we need to, I'd like to request that the town administrator start to put together a, some kind of a, a planning process to, t to take a look at the water department operation and you know, begin, to, uh, begin to evaluate whether we should be looking at a, a totally contracted operation or partial, or should we? Okay. Have a contract out the running of the treatment plan. I mean, some something based on facts and a, and a plan that we can, and, and a, a probably a a series of plans or alternative plans, so we can kind of take a look where we go on and then make a choice based on logical uh, evidence and, and logic, which we don't have now. We just every every week we come in here, we have a different idea. We hit with something different that that you know even after we talk to them. Those people, they, they change it in the, in the following week. So we would, I, I just like to see something. We start to look at. I mean, we've we've contracted out the building and, and all that, and I'm assuming that's going to go well. And maybe it's time to look at the at the next phase of that. And I would like to see us have something in front of us. That so we the can, motion is. Just uh, I can make it make it general to have the sure. town administrator put together a, an evaluation of, of scenarios to move forward with the water department for possible contract operations. Do I have a second? Leave it all pretty much open as to what... I'll second. I have a second. Any discussion <clears throat> from the board? Any other to be added? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I'd like to suggest, Mr. Chairman, that we do it it's in such a fact that it's not, it doesn't get done in a day and a half. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. All right, Deb, that concludes our um, administrator, town administrator update. Okay, discuss the Board of Selectmen operating policies. Okay. As chairman of the board, I feel that this time, time, from time to time, it is good practice to discuss and affirm the Board of Selectmen's operating pol policies. The Board of Selectmen serves as the Chief uh, Executive Officer of the Town. As such, no single member of the Board can develop or and implement his or her own policies, nor direct or mandate policies or department heads. Policies are developed and approved by majority vote during duly posted public meetings. As Chairman of the Board of Selectmen is designated the responsibility to call and schedule meetings and to approve meeting agenda items. The chairman provides the broad oversight over the policies and issues of uh, affecting the town. The chairman works closely with the town administrator on policy and administrative matters. In the absence of the chairman, the vice chair fulfills this role. In the absence of the chairman and the vice chairman, the clerk fulfills this role. The town administrator serves as the chief executive officer and works to implement Excuse the... Excuse me, the, chief administrative officer? I'm sorry. The, the town administrator serves as the chief administrative officer 
and works to implement the Board of Selectmen policies. As a general rule, an individual selectman having formal questions or inquiries on the policy relating to the administration of various departments should direct his or her inquiry through the town administrator. The town administrator will report directly back to the individual selectman and if necessary to the full board. This policy does not apply to casual conversations on town, uh, on town matters between a selectman and a department head. The Board of Selectmen can uh, vote to reaffirm these operating policies. Is this, this clear to everybody on the board? The operating policies? The policy. hmm? Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. With is that, there some reason, reason, excuse reason, me? Yeah. Some reason that this is coming up at this point? Or? I just, yeah, I felt issue. that it just, yeah. that we should reaffirm this policy, okay? So that we should all understand as as um, elected officials, especially serving as the, on the board of selectmen, okay, is I think it's a good policy every every once in a while to, you know, it's just like taking the ethics test. It's it's important to reaffirm this, and especially to the townspeople, and um, you know, again, this is open government for everybody to see, so they should understand how we conduct ourselves as elected officials. Exactly. So. With that, I'll make I would a motion. Have a motion to accept, accept this policy. I have a motion to accept right. the policy. I'll second it. I have yeah. a second. Any discussion? Yeah, just one yes. quick one, Mr. Chairman. In other words, this is just a, a science, a, chain, a clear chain of command. Yes. For not only the board of selectmen, but the department heads. And exactly. As well. Other town entities of, of, of how they should also respond back to the board of selectmen. Yes. Deal with, so. And this is this is also for the department heads and for the, the selectmen, so they understand the the chain of command and how it's. Mr. T uh, Chairman, is it in order to uh, send a letter of this vote tonight around the different chairman and board? Yes, we'll we'll send a yeah. we'll let's send a, a letter so out also to the department heads so that for them to understand it. Okay. Yeah. So with that, I have a motion. I have a second. We've had discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to minutes. Board of Selectmen. For last week, we couldn't vote on this. This was um, February the twenty fourth, two thousand fourteen, executive session. So, um, I wasn't present for this meeting. So, do I have a motion? Has everybody read these? Yes. Yeah. I have a motion. I'll make that motion. Second it. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll be abstained from it if I wasn't here. Okay. Okay, the town um, has the following vacancies. Uh, Council on Aging, one seat. Conservation Commission, one seat. Uh, Finance Committee, one, uh, one seat. Fence viewer position, two positions. Uh, wood Lumber Bark Inspector and Zoning Board of Appeals Associate to open seats. For more information on these positions, please contact the selectmen at 948-2372. The 375th anniversary, I'm going to turn it over to you, John. The uh, information is posted on the town's website, and uh, we have a, uh, a link to the uh, Raleigh 375 anniversary information. And uh, we are uh, still requesting local businesses and uh, town residents to make a donation to help defray the cost of uh, the expense of uh, running the concerts on the common and other events uh, during the uh, celebration. Thank you, Joe. Can I had one thing to oh, ask yes. one question. Uh, the, the sign out front for town hall mm -hmm. is not in good badly shape badly faded yes it is i noticed when we got the printout from the cpc money's available that there is some money left in the sign appropriation for historic signs and i wonder if maybe the someone in this office could could check and see if we could get that replaced we have to look at the article that we that actually established that account that was basically for historic houses, house signs. Is that what that was for? Yeah. And I, I've been looking at that out there for a, a while now. And, and 
Yeah, I, I, think, I got thinking about it the other day. <laughs> Every time I go by there, I look if, at it. Do you know if we have anything that we could spend on that, Deb? Is there anything left in the uh, maintenance account? Pretty, or? Um, well, the town hall is pretty tapped. What we'll do is we'll monitor the selectman's expense line, and um, if we get a price, I have no idea. Okay. Involved I, in the cost, we might be able to squeeze that out of your discretionary um, expense budget. My, my thought was I could go talk to the sign maker. That, that may actually made that sign for us and, and see what he could do for us mm -hmm. as far as trying to get that ready for the uh, 370. Sure. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, the battery recycling box is located here at Town Hall and in the library. Yeah, there's little AAA batteries, A bat, AA batteries, or you know, C's or D's, and you have them, put them in a plastic bag instead of throwing them so they can wind up in the landfill. Throw them in a little plastic bag, drop them off in the battery boxes that are located right here at Town Hall or the library. Okay? Good way of becoming green. Uh, one, um, one book, one community program hosted by the Raleigh Public Library. If I J can offer, sure. offer a comment, there is a uh, banner at the front door of the library uh, that uh, celebrates uh, Raleigh Reads. And it's posted yes, up there, I and, that the, uh, and we're advocating the uh, novel to be read by all of the town people, town residents. Okay. Um, Rally Food Pantry is in need of donations. The Rally Food Pantry is open Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and Thursdays from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And um, I guess they have a call. Can I comment regarding that, Mr. Yes. Chairman? So, uh, over the weekend, this, I believe it was the Scouts put red bags yes. on everybody's mailbox. And this is a way for citizens to easily fill the bags. I don't we met, I don't know what the date is they're going to pick them up, but there's a notice on the bag. Mm -hmm. I think it's next Saturday. Uh, the, yes, the 12th. The 12th. Yes. We, are, we would encourage citizens to fill those bags and yes. put them out on the, on the appropriate date. The Scouts will pick them up, so it's a, a very, very easy way to... Uh, to help out the food pantry and Saturday morning, morning put it right on you, put that red bag, fill it up with food. Good, good exactly. idea to, to, for the scouts to do a good scout project. Mm -hmm. They've done this in the past, yes, yeah. they have. It's, so, it's hang around your mailbox out year. front. Thanks, Dave. That, that's good. Okay, um, ladies at the they were telling me, I guess they've had a problem with a freezer, it's it's, it's died. Oop. Okay, town meeting will be held on uh, Monday, May the 5th. Again, we need you at that town meeting, so please uh, mark your calendar. Again, it's Monday, May the 5th. We need a quorum. At 7.30 p.m. At 7.30, thank you, Dave. I mean, Joe. You're on the right, that's right. <laughs> Dave's on the, Dave's on the, the problem before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys move all the time. Joe's over on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> like twins now, too. <laughs> okay, the water, uh, water customers need you to call Pentuck, uh, Penichek, sorry, Penichek, 1-800-553-5191. Again, if you have a problem with your bill, and Penichek will call one 800 Five five three five one five nine. That's for billing, uh, payment, and customer service questions. And, and the first bills will be going out this Thursday, uh, April tenth, and they should be receiving them uh, shortly thereafter. So be careful when this bill comes out. From okay, Penichuk. it's not going to look like the old the old water department bill. Okay, with the blue. This is going to have Penichek up on the upper left hand corner. Okay, so. Do, be careful when your your mail comes. You don't just say, "Oh, I think this is you know junk junk mail," <laughs> and you throw this to the right. side. Yeah. Again, be watching be watching for that kind of check water bill. Okay, and Mr. Chairman, while we're yes. on the green subject, uh, yes, the light department is now in the process of collecting compact fluorescent lamps. If you have some of those lamps that you want to dispose of, drop them in another plastic bag, but not with the batteries. These aren't the long fluorescent tubes. We're no. talking about we're talking the, the compact fluorescents. The compact the little fluorescents, uh, those squiggly ones. I kind of refer to them as a Dairy Queen. The <laughs> Dairy Queen. <laughs> okay. The Dairy Queen lamp. I mean, the they look at the little squiggly yeah, things on the right. top. So, I mean, it's a squiggly light. It's got the, uh, the circles on it. So those are the CFL lights. The compact fluorescents, yes. Compact fluorescent and lights. The light department will take those and dispose of them properly. Okay. So just drop them off there. Very good. Yeah, you guys um, to go would there. you like us to add that to the list? It would be. Yeah, yeah I think Where it would. do you bring them? You don't bring them here. No, the don't bring them in the light department. And you can put them again. Put them. Put them in Just a little in plastic inside. bag they and drop them. They don't have a container outside. So bring it right in. Well, you have to. Have, you have to go during oh. office hours. Oh, yes. Okay. So okay. into the lobby of the, okay. the light department. 
Okay, and again, that's a good way of becoming green. You don't want to throw those in the landfill right. at all. You want to put those in a little plastic bag and drop them off at the light department. Yeah. Unfortunately, so. they will not take the long tubes. Yes. Uh, you can dispose of them when the health board has their hazardous waste day. Okay, and that is coming up. Hazardous uh, waste let, day. No, uh, they, they have that in the fall, in the uh, spring, in May. They have a um, uh, light metals, um, white goods. Yes. That should be coming up uh, mid-May, correct? Usually it's uh, the, th the third Saturday in May, yes. usually. We'll be getting that information out very soon. Okay. Yeah, got a lot of people have been asking me about that when, yeah. when it was coming up. I think they're finalizing the details on that. Yes. Okay. So well, with that, we have... As we're on the subject of the Lake to Buy, I'd just like to commend uh, and let townspeople know that the, with the melting of the snow and the frost out of the ground, mm -hmm. the Lake to has commenced finishing the lighting project on the town common. It is really looking great. And as people go by, hopefully they'll notice it, and uh, hopefully the trees will be budding out, and it's it's really, really looking fantastic over there. Some a of big the hand is given to the light department for the amount of yes. effort and time and I'm sure financial incentive so that they're adding to that whole that whole project. It's really the great. light stanchions are up, but not the lights themselves, right. the fixtures. Sure. So there's, there's wiring to be done, and then the, for the fixtures to come in to be placed. So there's still work to be done on the common. So, anything else? With that, I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? I'll make the second. Oh, I have a second? <laughs> I'm rushing. <laughs> it's March Madness. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, second. <laughs> oh, second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you.